All right, guys, in this video, I want to show you how to take your toms from this to this using just a few simple EQ moves. All right, and before we get to it, I want to offer you my free reverb cheat sheet in the description below with some reverb settings I think you'll really like. So hit the link, drop a comment, all that good stuff. Okay, so first, again, like I've said about our drum setup, we're dealing with a small booth that has a ton of bleed in everything. So my, the first thing that I kind of know I'm not going to be able to do is go boosting a lot of stuff because it will make the cymbals go crazy. So what I need to listen for is this, the things to take away from these toms uh, so that they can kind of just be cleaned up. That's what I'm going for. I'm not trying to, you know, break a whole bunch of rules here. I'm just trying to clean it up so what needs to be heard can come through without messing everything else up. So let's real quick just take a look and listen to these toms. Okay, so what I'm hearing most of is um, just mid-range. There's a lot of that bow, kind of like, you know, gnarly mid-range that doesn't sound good on any drum ever. And it just kind of seems to be a buildup in, in that space. So first off, counterintuitive to what a lot of people may think, one of the first things I'll do is I will high pass both toms. Because, you know, yes, there's a lot of low end on toms, but it's not living in those sub lows. That's not what we're hearing. You know, people think low end and they think a big broad range down there, but really we're hearing more of the low, low mids that sound good and punchy. And a lot of people mistake that for the sub lows. It's just not all the way down there. And if it is, it's probably not good low end. It's going to be kind of nasty sounding. So I would just go ahead and low cut them both. I haven't what it uh, around 80 up to even 100 on the uh, high rack tom. So, again, I think the main thing I'm hearing here is bad mid-range. So let's just take a listen. I'll just let them uh, roll for a minute, and I'll kind of sweep around and let you uh, see what we can hear. So in both of those, you can hear it's that it's that weird plasticky kind of um, pointy mid range that just sounds goofy. You know, it sounds um kind of, what are those? Uh, I can't remember what they're called the uh, the marching band drums that they they need a lot of that mid range to pop through out on a marching band field, but it kind of has that you know gonk gonk. I don't know how to even describe it, but that mid range that I just don't like. And to me. When we pull that mid-range out is when we kind of get the cannon toms that sound like they do in a, a PA, on like, on like a big PA. You know, I mean, I, I, I grew up on, you know, Metallica and stuff like that, and I think of the toms on like the Black Album or something where uh, it's the those really scooped kind of mids, but it just makes them just sound so fat and punchy. So a lot of times my ears go for pulling mids on a tom rather than uh, boosting other things first. It's just the sound that I like to hear. And again, we could go and boost some stuff. You know, could these sound better with some more clarity? I think so, yes. But, you know, we're always working with the situation we're given when we're running sound live. And to me, when I hear these drums with this drum booth and this setup, the cymbals and other things pop through too much. And yes, we could gate it, but I don't even think that because the, the bleed is there all the time, I don't think that a gate would even be the cleanest way of doing it. So to me, to keep an even tone across all the drums, I think that just cutting those mids and cleaning those up is the best way to do it. So that's what I'd do. Uh, let me know in the comments how you do that, and uh, if you have anything uh, you want to add to this, because there's a lot to talk about with this type of thing for sure. 
So again, hit the link for the free reverb cheat sheet, and I'll see you guys in the next one.